Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge, and along with Pastor Nanette Christofferson, we welcome you to Love of Christ Lutheran Church, both in person and online, uh, here at our 9 o'clock service. Uh, at this service, we have a lot of moving pieces here. So uh, after the children's message, uh, three-year-olds to five-year-olds are welcome to go to Sunday school in our godly playroom. And then after communion, uh, first through sixth grade are welcome to go uh, to Sunday school. We also are starting confirmation uh, for all seventh through uh, ninth graders. And uh, that will happen at 10 o'clock or right after this service. And our uh, Wednesday night adult study starts with our WOW program. Uh, that will happen at 6 o'clock in our fellowship hall, which is uh, uh, on that, the, the, the side of the uh, sanctuary next door. And we have a meal at 5.30 in rooms 48 to 49. Uh, after worship, I encourage you to introduce yourself to somebody you might not know. We have people coming and going a lot, and we have people coming back to church after two years. So... Uh, we need to rebuild our community, and the way we do that is each of us taking responsibility to just be friendly, hospitable, and, uh, and reaching out. And I'm going up to people say, I know, I, I know I've seen you around, but I can't remember your name. So, and you can always get a name tag, and that helps too. Uh, go to the e-news and website for uh, more detailed information. Communion is offered to all who are baptized and believe you're welcome to come to the Lord's table. We have grape juice that's yellow in the, in the tray with the glasses. Uh, wine is red. We have gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. They're in a, a plastic tin, and you can select those out of. If you just want a blessing, just fold your arms, and the pastor at the station will give you a blessing. Again, we're glad that you're with us. Uh, and uh, we encourage and invite you uh, to uh, join us in, uh, in finding ways in which you can be a part of this ministry, however that may happen and how the Spirit leads. At this time, we have our uh, Director for Youth uh, and Family Faith Formation, Kevin Anderson, is going to give you a little invitation. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor said, I am Kevin Anderson. I'm the Director of Youth and Family Faith Formation here at Love of Christ. Um, I am just going to share a few things with you this morning and extend an invitation for how we can continue to connect as a congregation with our young people, our youth that are around. Uh, so I'm going to start it off with a little bit of grim news, and then we'll have better news. So bear with me here. Uh, in the past 30 years, I've said this before, in youth ministry... In the United States of America, we have spent more money on youth ministry in the past 30 years than the entire existence of youth ministry since the 50s, 60s. So the past 30 years has had the highest concentration of money invested into youth ministry. My generation, the millennials, are the recipients of those funds. However, when you look around, who do you see few of? The millennials, right? My group took the money and they ran, unfortunately. So, this is not like a love of Christ Lutheran Church problem. It is, but in, this is happening across the United States of America. Religious unaffiliation is increasing in the United States of America. Of that group of people, the largest percentage are my generation. The millennials are the largest portion of religious unaffiliated. Bad news. Uh, there is no magic button to fix that. There is no magic formula to fix that. So what can we do uh, to kind of offset that trajectory? Well, I think we like to keep it simple. And um, we'll look at our baptismal promises. When a child is baptized uh, in our church, we bring out these red books, and promises are made. Promises from God, promises from parents and sponsors, and promises from the congregation. And one of those promises from the congregation is this. The pastor says, People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? And the congregation responds and says, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. So how can I help you all with your, pap your baptismal promises? Um, I've come up with a little graphic here. It looks like this. You will see this uh, more and more around. Again, we're, we're keeping things simple. Uh, first and foremost, one way that you can support our youth is to pray for them. 
You will see in the E! News in the weeks coming up in that and even in the back by the youth room there a list of names of all of the young people who are connected to our, our church. Uh, you don't see most of them on Sunday mornings here. They come on Wednesday nights. They're participating in the musicals. They're doing all kinds of things in all kinds of ways in all kinds of places. A, a deeper level that you can be involved in youth ministry is you can actually seek out the young people that are here. You can intentionally get to know them, say their name, introduce yourself, find out what they're doing. You can go even further with that and connect regularly with them. Make it a habit to find the Romans, the Bradens, the Maddies of the congregation and say hi to them every week. Our young people are extremely, extremely busy. And often they have to make choices between participating in church events or extracurricular activities. We have a group of people, uh, older folks in our congregation, who have committed to attending off-site activities for our young people. If you want to go even further, you can go to the football games, the band concerts, the basketball games, all of those kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to have schedules posted for our kids of what's going on in the activities. I'm here to help with all of these different points of connections. And the last point of connection is to mentor them. And that's a one-on-one -on -one committed relationship to uh, investing into these young people. That can be a group of people that do that. We can get all kinds of creative on how we want to mentor our young people around here. So this is just a friendly reminder that our young people are here, and it is our, we made promises to support them. This is a simple way for you to do that. So check your e-news in the coming weeks. You'll see this graphic around. Check out the youth ministry, by the youth ministry room. There's a board out there that will have some information. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Good morning. Uh, in Zechariah, we are told to not despise the day of small beginnings. And uh, we have been uh, blessed with uh, uh, some, uh, a, a horn player. I remember when uh, Ben's uh, mother came to me a couple of years ago and said, hey, you know, I'd like, maybe my son could play during worship. And we've been working for a long time, and Mike's, Mike Obert is like, oh, you know, I have an alto sax, too. And now we have a, a, we have a, a, a tenor saxophonist, Anna Maris, who's uh, also uh, happy to join us. And so, like I said, we don't despise the day of small beginnings. So this is my, I'm pretty excited that the first week we, we will have uh, a horn section, a three horn horn section. So you'll hear a lot of that this, this week. And so, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you come here, you never know what will happen. So, you know, I just want to encourage you with that. Now, we're going to do a new song, and the new song is called The Father's House. We did it last week. Uh, I wanted to go over verse 1 because it's kind of wordy, but that's the way pop music is today. It's wordy. So, let's, the, what, should we, what we should do with every new song, you speak the, speak the lyrics first. See how much difficulty I have? Speak the lyrics. So, let's go right on the top, and we'll speak through the lyrics. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost, lost in my mistakes. What my looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over. My story's just begun. Failure won't define me because that's what my father does. Failure won't define me because that's what my father does. Okay, not too bad, right? And the, we did the last part, uh, we did the chorus, ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, because it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Let's just sing through it. We sang it last week. Let's just go right on top. Sometimes on this journey... I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over My story's just begun Failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does
arrival's just the end game. The journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, somebody has to write arrangements when we have horn players. So uh, that one was written by Ted Sistrunk, our bass player. Thank you, Ted. But Ted and I have been sharing that chore, so you'll hear a sm some from him, some from me. The good ones are from him. <laughs> it's like, this, is an, this is another one. Gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see. You're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart.
Let us pray. Glorious God, we gather here this morning to praise your name. We come to worship you, to offer ourselves, to offer our whole hearts, our minds, our spirits, to hear what you want us to hear, to receive what you want us to receive, and to be moved in loving service to one another, to our neighbor, to this world. Bless all who are seeking to be teachers of the faith as we launch confirmation and continue Sunday school and as we support Kevin and the youth ministry here at Love of Christ. We praise you, O Lord, for the musicians who offer their talents to help lift our spirits, not in performance so they get applause, but in praise to you so that we might give you glory. We offer this prayer now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We invite the children forward for the children's message. You may be seated. All right, friends. So how are you today? Good. Good. Could Harrison, could you come sit right over here? Then that way I can see you better, okay? And Harper, could you come right here too, please? Thank you. It's so nice to see you all here today. All right. So today we're going to talk about lost and found and the game hide and seek. Have you ever played the game hide and seek? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like that game? Yeah. What do you like about it? Oh, so you like to hide, right? So you can be hard to find, right? Well, let's say that Roman here, we're playing hide and seek, and let's say that he found a really good place to hide. And it was so good that nobody could find him. And we kept looking, but we couldn't find him, and he fell asleep. Oh, no. Do you think that we're going to go, oh, we can't find Roman. We're not going to look for him anymore. We're just going to go out to dinner. Would we do that? What would we do? We would keep looking looking for him, wouldn't we? I did a lot of good stuff before, and mom and and dad could not find you. They couldn't find you, huh? (laughs) Yeah. And so when someone's lost, we're going to what? Keep looking for them until they're found. Well, you know what can sometimes happen to us? Sometimes we can forget who we belong to. Do you know who we belong to? God, yeah. And it's easy for us to forget that we belong to God. But you know what? God never forgets that we belong to him. He will come searching after us and remind us that we are his children. So in your baptism, we are reminded that we are children of God. And so I'd like us to remember this and to remind each other that we are God's children. So here's one way we can do that. Can you put your hand up like this? And we're going to, with our finger, make a sign of the cross on our hand, okay? So we're going to go, I am, I am a, child a child of God. Right. Now, do you think you can look at someone and put it on their forehead, put the sign of the cross and say that on their forehead? I'll say it to you, okay? Can you say, you are are a child child of God. God. All right. Do you think you can remind each other of that so that you don't forget whose you are? All right. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. And can the congregation repeat after us and along with us? Dear God. Help us us. to remember remember. that we we belong belong to you you. and that we we are are your children. children. In Jesus' name, name. we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up. And you can go to Sunday school. Miss Erica, right here, if you're going to Sunday school, we'll take you to Sunday school. Stand for the gospel, acclamation, and the reading of the gospel.
The gospel for today is from Luke 15, beginning with the first verse. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Praise you, God. Please be seated. Good morning. Now let's be honest here. How many of you looked for your phone, your car keys, your sunglasses, your purse, or your wallet this morning before you left on your way to church? Oh, good. You guys are being honest. I'm glad. Must be because we're in church, right? We have a tendency to lose the things that we carry around the most. So it shouldn't surprise us the things that we use the most are the things that we often lose the most. There's been some research done on things that we lose. And research shows that we spend one to ten minutes a day on looking for things that are lost. Research also shows that 69% of Americans, when looking for that one thing that they lost, happened to find something else that they had lost earlier. <laughs> and in a study done by Pixie, this group that does surveys, they found in their lost and search or lost and find project, they found that we will spend up to seven months of our lives looking for things that are lost. We hate to lose things. We do not like to lose things because we know of the replacement costs or, or things like that. So it's really no wonder that technology is around to help us out. Technology helps us with locating our phones, locating our car keys, locating our cars. Technology helps us in locating our baggage. So while we might not have it in our hand, we at least can see where it is. We don't like to be without the things that we like to have with us. This is also true physically. We do not like to be physically lost. So we have wonderful things like Google Maps and Apple Maps. And really, I wonder how many marriages has Siri saved? <laughs> Lostness is something that we do not like. Because when something is lost, we become uncomfortable. We become anxious, and we often feel a lot of stress, because whatever object it is that we lost, we often feel now that we, or things, are out of our control. Would you please pray with me? Creator Lord, open our hearts as we get ready to enter into your gospel word. Lord, guide us into a new awareness of lostness. But also let us rejoice in knowing that you are a God seeking after us. Father, Spirit, Jesus, 
May you enter into the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, and may it be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We find ourselves in the 14th week of Pentecost and in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. We heard the first two parables read from this 15th chapter, but as you know, there's one more parable that was not included, and that is the parable of the two lost sons or the prodigal son. So before we get into our chapter today of verses 1 through 10, I'd like us to stop and to pause and to think about why does Jesus teach in parables? For we have parables next week and we have parables in some of the weeks to come. So why is this a tool that Jesus uses to teach us? Well, parables do many things, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of things that parables do. But one of the reasons why Jesus used parables was not to conceal, but to reveal. To reveal who God is. To reveal something about the nature of God. And also, one of the reasons Jesus chose parables was to shine light. To shine light on something that had been in the dark. To shine light on the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God reigns in the here and now and in the yet to come. And another thing I'd like to bring up about parables is that parables are prickly. They are prickly because they do not bless all alike. One person may hear a parable and go, Wow, that was amazing. I now have greater insight into God. And another person may be a little more confused and have to change perhaps their perspective of how they look at God and they find themselves in a wrestle. And remember, that's Jesus you're wrestling with and not the pastor. As we take a look at the parable that we have before us today, it begins with the Pharisees. The Pharisees are grumbling. They're grumbling at Jesus. And they're grumbling because he eats with sinners and tax collectors. And I think they look at what he's doing and they're like, how can he eat with those people? And it looks like he's enjoying it. And they're calling him friend. How can this be so? How can the Son of God be eating with these people if in fact he is the Son of God? And so the Pharisees are not too happy with what they see Jesus doing. And Jesus hears them and he says to them this parable that there was a shepherd whose sheep were in the fold and the flock was all there except they were missing one and the shepherd goes out to find that sheep finds the sheep, brings the sheep back, and they rejoice at the one who was lost but now is found. And Jesus goes on to say there was a woman who lost her coin, her silver piece that was needed so much to complete the other nine that she had, that she turned her house upside down, inside out to clean it. And she found the coin and neighbors and friends and people rejoice, rejoice that this coin was found. They rejoice with her. As we look at this parable, we've oftentimes understood it, that God is the shepherd, that God is the woman, that God is the one who will go out seeking and searching and looking for that lost person, sheep, or coin. God will not give up. God will continue to pursue. And as we take a look at this parable, God will continue to pursue the lost. So just a few minutes ago, we talked about physically being lost. We talked about how our things, toys, our purses, wallets, phones, sunglasses can be lost. But what does it mean to be spiritually lost? When we are spiritually lost, we forget whose we are, who we belong to. We forget that we are a child of God. There are lots of ways that we can enter spiritual lostness. Lots of things that can happen that can cause one into a crisis of faith that lead into a spiritual lostness. Death, 
unexpected death, sudden death, or even expected death can cause one to go into a spiritual crisis and spiritual lostness. But there are lots of other things that cause us and lead us into spiritual lostness. Our addictions, our hatred, our bitterness, our unforgiveness are all things that can lead us into a state of spiritual lostness. Our faith is composed of paradoxes. One of the most famous paradoxes is saint and sinner, but we can take a look at lost and found and also see that it too is a paradox. Can we be lost and found simultaneously? In 2010, my husband and I received a phone call. It was a phone call about his father named Chauncey. And it was letting us know that Chauncey was in the hospital. Now, to give you a little bit of background about Chauncey, he was a retired pastor. He was 98 years old, and we had just seen him six weeks prior, and he was taking the city bus off to this high-rise place where he ministered to um, senior citizens there in a worship service on Saturday nights. He still went to tech studies. He was an active 98-year-old. And so when we received this phone call, he had had problems with irritable bowel syndrome before, and we just assumed that this was just another bout with it, and and he would get over it. And we talked to him in the hospital, and he seemed to think that everything was fine. But then two days later, we received a phone call from his cousin saying, I don't know if Chauncey's been completely honest with you. Why don't you all come up to Seattle? So we took the kids and went up to Seattle to go see Grandpa. And as we walked into his room, the doctor was walking into the room also. And we got to hear a little bit more of what was going on. And we found out that two days prior, while he was in the hospital, they had done some testing on his kidney. And they saw that his kidney was starting to fail. And so they started him on some medication. And that medication would hopefully kick the kidney back into functioning a little better. And then um, in a few days, we would know. Well, it was now a few days. The doctor told us that this medication was not, or his body was not responding to this medication, and that slowly his kidney would start to fail him, and then other body organs, too, would begin to fail. There was nothing more that could be done. After he shared this news with us and we asked him questions, the doctor left. Our cousin took our children out of the room to go get them some food. And we sat there with Chauncey. Chauncey looked at us with these beautiful, crystal clear blue eyes, folded his hands, and closed them. He was at a loss for words. He was at a loss in his thoughts. Mark and I were at a loss. At a loss for what we knew we were going to be losing, but also at a loss for what do we say. We sat silently in that room for 45 minutes. And then Chauncey looked up at us and he said, well, if I'm going to die, let's party. (laughs) Too bad we couldn't bring the margarita machine into the hospital. So that day, people came and visited Chauncey. That day, he asked that we sing songs, we sing hymns, we sing people's favorite hymns along with his favorite hymns. We we said prayers over him. Over 30 people came to this 98-year-old's room that day. And we were filled with an unbelievable sense of joy. And yet we were lost and we were found. For death was palpable in that room. Death was imminent. And yet at the same time, we were found and filled with the joy of the Lord. Later that day, after everybody left, and it had been kind of titled, the nurses would walk out of the room just shaking their heads, going, we don't believe what we're seeing. But later that night, after everything calmed down, Chauncey fell into a coma and never woke up again and passed away later. I tell you this because we can experience great loss and lostness 
and yet be completely found and filled with joy at the same time. Barbara Brown Taylor writes in her book, An Altar in uh, the World, she writes that lostness is something that brings us strength around our edges and keeps us soft in the middle. Lostness keeps us humble. Lostness makes us vulnerable. Lostness brings to us empathy. And lostness helps us know whose we are. And in our lostness, God is there. We are a people. We are a people who can experience great lostness and profound foundness and joy all at the same time. And we are reminded through our baptism of whose we are. We are not to forget that we belong to the Father. We belong to the Creator. That we are His child, beloved, and held. And despite our lostness, our Creator is always there. I stand in awe. I stand in awe of a God, of a God who will search after his one lost sheep. I stand in awe of a God who will search her house and clean it upside down to find that lost coin. And how many times do we forget whose we are and that we are to go out and share this profound joy that we have in the Lord with others. So I say today, go out and share the joy of the Lord with all. And I'd like you to repeat with me what I said to the children. Hold out your hand. Make the sign of the cross. I am a child of God. Now look at someone around you and say, you are a child of God. And now, all of us, let us not forget, we are of God. Amen. We will now have our confirmation blessing. So those children who will be entering confirmation, please come forward. All right, today we take another step in our Faith Stepping Stones ministry. And we have our confirmation student in front of us. We have a few more than three. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately they're not here. <laughs> Let us hear a reading from God's word. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be put upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Joyce, in Christian love, you presented your son for holy baptism. In baptism, sacred promises are made as parent of this child. It is your calling to keep these sacred promises. To faithfully bring them to the services of God's house, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. To place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and to provide for his instruction in the Christian faith. In fulfillment of that obligation, you have presented Braden today before this congregation. If it is your intention to continue in the promises you made at his baptism, I ask you to lay your hand on your, on your son as you bless him. Repeat each line after me and insert your child's name. Grace, God, giver of all life, pour your Holy Spirit upon the spirit of wisdom and understanding. So say those words. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and love of God. The spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Congregation, do you promise to support 
and encourage Joyce and all the parents of our confirmands in keeping these sacred promises. If so, respond, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. One of the ways we provide for their instruction in the Christian faith is the program of confirmation. Entry into confirmation is an important step in the life of a Christian. On the day of their confirmation, these young people will respond publicly to their baptism. When God claimed them as God's own and made them part of God's church, the body of Christ on earth. On this important day, the day you step into confirmation, we ask God's blessing on you and the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by the water and word in baptism. You have called Braden to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new life. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. May, the, may our Father in heaven stir up in you, Braden, and all the confirmants, the gift of the Holy Spirit, guiding you through scriptures, educating you in the doctrine, and holding you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's show our support of Braden and Joyce and all the confirmation family. You may go back to your seat. Invite the congregation to stand as we join together in confessing our common faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our song, The Lord is My Salvation. We're featuring all of our singers on this song, and we'd like you to join us at the chorus. of God has reached for me and pulled me from this raging sea and I am safe on this solid ground the Lord is my salvation
You may be seated. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of joy, we listen today to stories from Jesus, that there's more joy in heaven over one who has been lost being found than those who have already come to know your endless love. Help us to capture the joy you know when others are found by your amazing grace. Lord, in your mercy. God who seeks and protects on this anniversary of the attack of our country on 9-11, we remember those who tragically lost their lives, those who courageously put the welfare of others ahead of their own, and those who still mourn. We give thanks for first responders, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, rescue workers, ER staff, and emergency response coordinators. Lord, in your mercy. God of provision, we give you thanks for all who give of their time, talent, and resources to support music ministry, faith formation, and provide service both within and outside this community. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we pray for the wisdom and skill to navigate and manage the natural resources which you bless this planet. Help us as we respond to earthquakes, floods, wildfires, hurricanes, and droughts. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, we pray for the people of Great Britain and all who mourn the loss of Queen Elizabeth. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing and strength, we bring before you in silence those heavy on our hearts and minds this morning. We add to those some from within this community, Pat, Priscilla, Diana, Jerry, John, Paul, Gary, Bev, Helene. And we lift up Barb Gilbert upon the death of her nephew and godson, Alex Voilis. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks to his Father in heaven, saying, this bread is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took a cup. And he gave thanks. And then he offered it for all to drink. Saying this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin. Do this. In remembrance of me. Lord remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are given for the people of God.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's join in singing This Is Amazing Grace. Peace, serve the Lord.
the storm.